Hey guys, it's GED question of the daytime and for the science test, there is some information that you need to know about heredity, uh, the likelihood of um, parents passing on certain traits to their offspring. And um, this falls under the category of Punnett squares, but today instead of looking at a Punnett square, we're going to be looking at some of the language we need to understand in order uh, to understand Punnett squares. And um, this is such good practice for your science GED. So let's take a look. It says genes. Oh, already I found a typo, y'all. <laughs> Not a good start. How about this? Pretend there's an S right there. Genes come in pairs. <laughs> Each half of a gene pair known as an allele each half of a gene pair known as an allele comes from one parent and codes for a certain trait. Some traits like having freckles, capital F, are dominant, meaning that they are always expressed. Other traits like not having freckles, little f, are recessive. Gene pairs can be homozygous, coding for the same trait, or heterozygous, coding for different traits. When a gene pair is heterozygous, the trait of the dominant allele will be expressed. And then it says, based on the reading, match each genotype gene pair to its description. Okay, guys, you know, this is really typical of the GED. You don't have to have a lot memorized. However, you have to be able to break down some pretty complex text. So that's what's going on here. So they say genes come in pair, each come in pairs, sorry. Each half of a gene pair known as allele comes from one parent and codes for a certain trait. And then I see this language. Some traits, like having freckles, at capital F, are dominant. So basically, when we want to talk about your genes. So your genes are how information is passed from a parent to an offspring, right? So, you know, if your parents have um, certain traits, you might end up with them. Like you have your father's nose or you have your mother's eyes. I'm sure you've heard that before or something of that nature. Um, as, well, scientists use letters to talk about how your genes are built. So genes come in pairs. What will happen is you'll have one gene from your mother and one gene from your father, or I should say allele. One allele from your mother and one allele from your father that code for the same thing. So this is the gene and it's made up of two alleles. Okay, now, uh, and we use letters to stand for it, alleles. Obviously, you don't just have letters floating around your body, uh, but that's how uh, scientists will symbolize it. Now, notice I used a capital F for one, and I used a lowercase f for the other. I'm going on this example here. They used f's for us, but realize that they use capital letters for dominant traits, and they tell you what dominant means here. It might be a little confusing. It says meaning that they are always expressed. So a dominant trait, if you have that gene, it will show. Okay, like for example, if blue eyes, say, were dominant, which they aren't, but if they were, anytime you had a blue eye gene, uh, regardless of what your other gene said, or a blue eye allele, regardless of what your other allele said, you would have blue eyes. Now, on the other hand, we use they use lowercase letter, letters, like here, little f, uh, being recessive. And a recessive means that you could have that gene, like having, a, what is the gene? Not having freckles. So little f stands for not having freckles. I could have this little um, a gene half, this allele that says I'm not going to have freckles, and yet I could still have freckles. And so how does that work? Well, recessive means that it's a gene that you could carry without it showing. Let me say that again. It's a gene you could carry, you could have it in your genetic code, and yet it doesn't show on the outside of you. It doesn't get expressed. Okay, so gene pairs can be homozygous, and this is a vocab word you should know, but they tell us right here what it means, coding for the same trait. So for example, if you had two, a big F from mom and a big F uh, from dad, like um, having freckles, having freckles, you would be homozygous. Or if you had both a little f allele from mom and a little f allele from dad, uh, then again, you'd be homozygous. Your two alleles trade for this or uh, code for the same trait, okay? Um, or they could be heterozygous, coding for different traits. That means you have one capital and one lowercase, one recessive and one dominant gene. So heterozygous, co coding for different traits. 
And then it says when a gene pair is heterozygous, uh, here's hetero zygous, different letters, the trait of the dominant allele will be expressed. So if you have one gene that says that you're going to have, or I should say one allele that says that you're going to have freckles, and one allele that says that you're not going to have freckles, which one will win? The dominant always wins. So look at the capital, capital letters. Even though you have genes that kind of argue, you're going to end up with freckles. Dominant always wins. Okay, so, oh my goodness. It says, based on the reading match, each genotype to its description. Okay, so let's take a look. Here's a genotype. It is the uh, all two alleles that you have in a specific gene, and you can see that these two are different. One is capital, one is lowercase. Different uh, is hetero, like a heterosexual person likes a different sex, and so I'm going to match this with heterozygous. Okay. Uh, now, next one, both of these two are obviously homozygous. We have a homozygous with capital F's, and we have a homozygous with little f's. And again, homo, like homosexual, means you like the same sex. Homozygous means that your alleles are both the same in a gene pair. Gene pair. So either they're both capital or they're both lowercase. So B and C are both homozygous. Now remember, capital letters stand for dominant, so this guy's the homozygous dominant, and lowercase letters stand for recessive, so this guy is the homozygous recessive. So let's sum up what we learned. A matches with 2, B matches with 1, and C matches with 3. All right, this is some language you should know. Make sure heterozygous, homozygous, dominant, recessive, and alleles and uh, traits, those that language is in your vocab uh, notebook if you don't know it, uh, because this will very likely come up on your GED. And knowing that vocabulary will make this complex reading a lot easier. All right, if you have any questions about this or any other GED question, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.